He is uh, ESPN Sports Center senior anchor. He's Keith Oberman joining us from uh, New York City. Beautiful skyline there, KO. Good to talk to you. Senior anchor, sports editor. <laughs> Did you insist to be called a senior anchor? No, as you know from your own experience, simple uh, simple explanation was I just started calling myself that. <laughs> uh, I'll wait till somebody, I'll wait till I get 87 memos in probably about six months saying, don't call yourself that. And I said, it's not in a row. No, I'm not trying to claim I've been, been there consistently since 1989, just sort of intermittently. I didn't know if it had to do with age that you're a senior and that's why you're a senior you know, anchor. It, it's probably that as well. I hadn't gone through the math on that. And you don't, I mean, the next, my competitor for this role and the person who has it in terms of continuous services, Linda Cohn and a gentleman does not ask the lady her age. So I would, die. I would say no, you know, I'm more senior than Linda. There's no doubt about that. Well, we never got, I don't think in trouble calling ourselves the big show by management, right? We just had a couple other shows the earlier sports center that had a problem with us calling ourselves the big show, but I don't think management was upset. Were they? Uh, well, you may recall that that was the uh, origin of the ad campaign. Yes. Because they said, don't stop calling it the big show. People don't understand it's sports center. It's like you have a graphic over everybody's face. There's a big sign and everything says sports center and ESPN on it. Why do, how is it that that's not enough? We can't just sort of occasionally call it. No. So that's then, then the result was, OK, this is Sports Center, And the next thing we knew, they've been running the same damn commercials for 35 years. So, well, not quite that long, but you know what I mean. But we got called in. That was the infamous meeting that, that we got called in upstairs. The the infamous no. meeting. OK, say. that uh, one of. But that was the one where they, they were rattling the saber there. That was the most memorable one. But that's where they insisted we stop calling ourselves the big show. And Keith said. We don't know how many people are watching. We're kind of making fun of ourselves, calling ourselves the big show. We're not. And yeah. then everybody took us seriously. Like, you guys really think you're the big show? We go, no. We well, no, the, the alternate was the long show. Because if you recall, when we started using that phrase, they had just expanded every night's 11 o'clock show or 11.30 show to an hour. And my point in just starting, having come from the world directly of local news for the preceding seven or eight years i was used to you know occasionally i'd do an hour half an hour of post game on a world series on a local station in la something like that but an hour of highlights and it, everything changing at the last second as you know and i maybe the i don't know 15th or 16th commercial break we ever threw to i turned to you and said dan <laughs> this is a big room, room, room of show <laughs> and <laughs> And you, yeah, yes, yes, it is. And I said, I, I, I feel like I'm going to call it that at some point. Don't, don't swear. So, yeah. uh, and then in this meeting, you know, we get yelled at because you must call. This is Sports Center, and then this Keith, is Sports Center. Yeah, and so Keith said, "All right, bleep them. We're going to say this usual. is <laughs> Sports Center." And we that night. I remember we finished the first 15 minutes, the A block, and we went mm. to break. Coming up on the show, blah, 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 blah. This is Sports Center. And I go, yes. okay, here we go. Or variations of this is Sports Center, or this is Sports Center. <laughs> and, uh, and the rest is history because when they came time to do an advertising campaign for it, the guys, Hank Perlman and the guys from Wyden and Kennedy said, you know what? We really should call it This Is Sports Center. And I was like, <laughs> yes. And I have, as you, uh, I have received, you know, zero dollars. <laughs> yeah. Any of that. Oh, but, that's I, but remember the Christmas gift? We got the cassette of uh, the, oh, the commercials. Well, that's much later. I was thinking of the year we got the Ripken game. Remember that? Oh. We got the, the Christmas gift for the entire company was a VHS of uh, my classmate Chris Berman calling calling the Ripken game, and uh, and you know I, I love Chris and I've known him since 1971, but this is the first VHS cassette I ever had that unwrapped itself and jumped into your VHS and hit play. And was already, I mean, and you hit mute and it, and it came out and unmuted and you heard it. So. All right. All right. Um, let me get to your uh, field of expertise, which is. Yeah, boy, I wish this, this were half your conversation here. But I don't okay. Think when did you come to the uh, conclusion that there is 0% chance of the World Series being played this year? Well, I, 
I was still holding out hope in March, but really since then it's been a slide downhill and it's an accelerating slide downhill. I did, this is just this morning's headlines, okay? The top seven states in terms of COVID spike in this country, California, Texas, Florida, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Georgia, and Michigan. That's 14 of the 30 teams play in the places where the disease is the worst at the moment. And this is by all metrics. This isn't just, oh, we've got more tests, therefore we have more positives. This is hospitalizations. This is people who are really sick. This is people who are asymptomatic. All metrics, percentage of population, percentage of positive tests is out of control. 14 of the 30 teams play in these states, and that's just the top seven. You could probably make a longer list. In Texas, hospitalizations doubled in the last 18 days. Florida's infections are five times what they were two weeks ago. 33% of ER cases who show up for something else like, you know, car accidents and, and overdoses and things, they test positive for it. There's a Planet Fitness in West Virginia. One guy was positive with symptoms on June 24th. He was there between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. 205 people have been told to quarantine for the next 14 days. And two of the older twins coaches have reportedly been told to stay home because uh, they're 66 and 68 years old and they have uh, health histories. That's just this morning. And we're still living in a world in which, for whatever reason and or whatever validity you put to it or not, this is irrelevant to that. You know, gatherings of 50 or more people are discouraged. How many people are going to be required to put on a baseball game? And yet, even at Yankee Stadium, things have calmed down here. We're in good shape. We've all wore our masks and everybody still wears a mask and they do a pretty good job of it, except for some of the millennials on Friday nights because you can't drink through the mask. But the, the, what are you going to do in Houston? What are you going to do if somebody gets sick? And not just players, but the support crew. There's going to be people cleaning the stadiums and people cleaning the, the locker rooms, the clubhouses. Where are they going to go if there's no hospital bed? The, the thing is so disastrous in potentiality that I'm, I'm terrified by it, in addition to the idea that, the, that, that what, this is without the idea of what happens if players get sick. What, ha what happens if players get sick? What happens if, if somebody gets a, a career-altering injury because it affects your lungs and it can affect your organs? And there's, you know, the odds are pretty good somebody young is going to get sick as a result. But you have leagues in Europe, you, you know, soccer, that are able to pull this off. Uh, yeah. And, and in countries in, that have been, you know, go outside without a mask and somebody comes over and tells you to go back inside. And, you know, they, there, there haven't been, there have been protests, there haven't been riots about it, there haven't been people showing up with guns in, in capitals demanding that they have the right to go out and, you know... Just, I always think of it this way. If, if it were, if you stop thinking about it as a disease, but imagine it as an invasion from another planet, like in Mars attacks. Would you really be demanding the right to go outside if the government said, hey, listen, <laughs> they can't find you if you're inside. Why don't you stay inside and watch TV? <laughs> it's the golden age of television. Everybody you've ever heard of has their own show and or podcast. Just watch for a little while. They're showing every baseball game ever recorded. There's two no hitters going on in my TV inside this window right now. I got hot the other day. I had three channels with Vin Scully on it. This is this is the golden time to stay inside. Now I'm fortunate enough to have a balcony, so I you know I'm I'm not one to speak about this, but that's the reason you know I, we we really did miss the, the the hint long ago. It should have been wear a mask and we'll be able to have sports again this summer. But I just don't, I don't know how it how it's proceeding, and I and I'm terrified. Having read this, uh, the thing that really sent me over the edge was the Major League Soccer protocols where they're going to have the players all sequestered and they're all, all everybody connected to the game is going to be in the hotel at the complex in Florida. Uh, and the people who are going to be bringing them food and serving them meals and cleaning the rooms, they're not. They go home every night. So they'll be commuting. So the bubble that the soccer players are in is not a bubble. Well, same thing with the NBA, right. Keith. It, yeah, no, is that is that I've been trying to find out is that what the NBA is doing? Everybody else in the complex goes home at night. Yeah. Then there, then uh, I took like one class 45 years ago or whatever the hell it was that touched on pandemics and and diseases that spread through a population. And this is what I remember of it, which is you want to avoid it, you have to cut off uh, possible exposure to it. And if you don't have a full bubble, you don't have a bubble. You can't be, okay, this guy's standing here, but the guy standing next to him can go home at night. 
It makes no sense. And, and it's, it's not going to work. And baseball doesn't even have any of that. There are going to be people commuting throughout this city to Yankee Stadium. They're out this metropolitan area to Yankee Stadium, and then the Yankees are going to get on a plane at some point and go to, and the Mets are, and every other team in the majors, and take whatever they have to another city. And this now takes us back to where we were at the start of, the, of March Madness. Is it, if they went ahead with March Madness, the disease would have been spread to, Lord knows, 400 other cities worth of germs. And I just, it's, it's, it sounds, all of this sounds to me like if you let management decide not what's really good and safe for everybody, but to decide what looks good and safe. And that's, you know, that's, it's, it's marketing. It's, it's a, it's an illusion of a bubble. And I just think there has, and again, if I'm wrong on this, I will come on every day if you want me to and say, hi, I'm Keith. I was wrong about this. Good. I'm glad I was wrong about this. Uh, I, I would be, I, I would be delighted to be getting into the subway or walking to Yankee Stadium right now if that was what was required to go see a game this afternoon rather than talking to you. I've been talking to you since 1984. I don't need to talk to you. <laughs> he but is, I, don't, I don't think I'm wrong. He is a senior anchor. I think that's what it is. It's not senior. It's senior anchor. That, yeah, that, I'm yeah. going to grow my pencil thin mustache. ESPN so. Sports Center, senior anchor. Uh, how do you think history is going to view the Astros? Uh, it depends really on whether or not baseball is played today, this season. Honestly, it's connected to this because if there's no season, there'll only be two stories for the whole year, which was the failed attempt to get a season going, which will be summarized as it was a failed attempt and 17 players wound up in the hospital for six months. Uh, and the Astros, those would be the stories of 2020. If they play a season, if they get to a world series, if I'm completely wrong about that, the Astros thing will have been not wiped from history, but it will be less of an urgency. The thing about, and we go back to the joke about the Ripken VHS tape, the thing about Cal Ripken and everything that happened in baseball in the aftermath of the strike and the lockout and the replacement players was not that somehow those things didn't happen, but they were knocked off the front page by Cal Ripken. That's what he did. And it was, a, it was the kind of thing where I think people who like to enjoy baseball would love to have the Astros story knocked off the front page and surely it has been since the middle of March but if they don't play any games this year it'll be one of the two stories for 2020 and history will judge them as a slightly in worse shape than say the 1951 Giants because we found out contemporaneously what they did and there's some proof of it rather than basically everybody everybody almost everybody was dead by the time the real story of how the 1951 Giants cheated using a telescope and signals from the outfield to make their miracle comeback. So it's something like, it'll be something like that, a little bit worse. Do you think it would be good or bad for baseball if the Astros were to win this year? <laughs> I, I think you could get away with it because there'll always be, uh, and I did a piece on this for Sports Center. sports history is what we decide it is. You know, the 1889 Brooklyn Dodgers won the American Association of Baseball League Championship and played in the World Series. Uh, the 1890 team moved to the National League and played in the World Series as pennant winners from the National League. The Dodgers view their history as starting in 1890. They don't count 1889, even though the same team with the same players played in the same kind of World Series, only they changed leagues. We decide what it is. We decide what history is. And, you know, it's like Barry Bonds in San Francisco and, and that environment. He's the all time home run hitter. And everywhere else, it's Hank Aaron. So, History will decide what it is. This season is already open to complete interpretations. And, you know, as I said, that's under the best circumstances. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a baseball season for the original purpose of having a baseball season, which is to provide a public service. And we see it more now than perhaps any of us living has ever, have, has ever seen it before. Great to see you. Great to hear from you. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how that 0.00... .00 percent of a world series hey Thanks. hey i only think there's a 50 percent chance that they open the camps on time next week so there you go <laughs> you're mr percentage here yes well i i did i took uh, seventh grade math several times so well we're 100 percent done with the interview though oh okay all right see you in eight years okay bud <laughs> <laughs> keith oberman senior anchor at uh, espn